Let's move on to number one, Georgia Bulldogs. They're now traveling to Tennessee. This will be 3.30 Eastern time on CBS. With a win in Knoxville, Georgia will match the SEC record with its 28th consecutive victory. Okay, they haven't lost in a really long time. It's been pretty remarkable. Alabama has the record right now. They've done it twice from 78 to 80 and then again from 91 to 93. But Georgia is about to at least hit that with a big win this weekend and then could surpass that with the opportunity against Georgia Tech. Will there likely be uh, a heavy favorite? Georgia is averaging about 41 points a game. So it's been different, I think, for Georgia this year. While they've been electric offensively the last couple of years, this year's group's a little methodical and they've been a little banged up. I feel like this year's group has maybe overcome more adversity with the injuries that they've had to deal with along the offensive line and with Ladd McConkey being out of the lineup there early and then a little bit banged up in the last game, but it sounds like he's going to be okay. Bowers missed some time. Milton's missed some time. They've had some adversity this year and they haven't dropped off from a productivity standpoint. Sixth in college football in points scored per game. Tennessee is also pretty good offensively, even though not nearly what they were a year ago. They're averaging about 32 points a game. But defensively, here's where it's going to be very interesting. Georgia's in the top six again, defensively, allowing just under 16 points a game. And Tennessee, I was surprised at seeing this number because it felt like, at least prior to the last couple of weeks, Tennessee defensively had made significant strides. They're allowing about 20 points per game but they've come back to earth just a little bit in the last month or so. And I wonder if it's more about the competition ramping up or the fact that this group, maybe they're starting to get figured out just a hair. Tennessee's going to have to be great against the run uh, because Georgia has this newfound approach to running the football. It was really a lot about Carson Beck. And while deep Dejon Edwards has been serviceable, Milton now I think opens things up quite a bit for them. He broke out in a big way last week. And I would anticipate that continuing as they lean more on the run game as the season now is wearing on and team's depth is getting a little more challenged. And if you look, I think this is going to be very, very interesting. I mean, if Tennessee can take away the run, will they be able to kind of slow down the pass? I don't think so. I mean, I think Carson Beck's that good. I mean, you watched the game last week. I mean, even the interception was a perfect place to football. You know, I mean, I just, I have so much faith in him. I have so much trust in him. I think he's big time. And while there have been occasional speed bumps, man, they have been few and far between. For a guy with this many expectations, for a guy with this big of shoes that he has to step into, I think he's been every bit as good as I could have antici ever anticipated from him. And if that can continue, they should be in really good shape, not just in this game, but in every game moving forward. How about Tennessee's run game? Uh, they've been really good on the ground this year. They're ninth in college football right now with 213 rushing yards per game. Georgia, on the other hand, this is one area where they're very different from where they've been in the past. Now, uh, total numbers aren't going to blow you away. They're allowing about 107 rushing yards per game. Obviously, that's pretty good. They've held five different opponents under 100. So there have been moments where it's been pretty good. But then again, there have also been moments where you're kind of left wondering, all right, are they quite as good in the front seven as they've been in the past? I think the answer is no. But that doesn't mean they're not good. They're just not Georgia good. Because Georgia in 21 and 22 have set a different standard. All right. Talked already a little bit about Tennessee's defense. But I think when you look at what Georgia's kind of turned into, they are a big play passing attack. And there's really there hasn't been now that you kind of look at Tennessee's schedule and removing yourself and kind of seeing it. The last couple of weeks, Tennessee's come back to earth in a big way. They gave up 10 and a half yards in attempt to Jalen Milrow in Alabama. Then they allowed for Missouri to run for 255. Uh, so in those two games, Tennessee's been outscored 70 to 27. All right, so that I think is something they're going to need to get addressed because this Georgia offense is probably the best they've seen. And if Tennessee's not up to the task on that side of the ball, it could be a really long day. Now, Brock Bowers was back last week. That was significant. Uh, in his absence, I don't know if it was necessarily felt, but they're a significantly better team with him on the field. Even if it's just in a decoy role, you have to always know where number 19 is. It's as a blocker, as an end of the line guy, as a guy that you move out, a guy that you can just snap it straight to, a guy that you can hand it off to, put him at fullback, hand it off. They can do all those different things. So it was really good to get him back. And I would imagine he'll be even more comfortable this week because it was nice, even though that he was gone, Lad McConkey stepped right in. And the two games that Bowers missed, Lad McConkey had 13 receptions. 
uh, and 230 yards. So McConkey rolled the ankle last week. He should be fine. Kirby Smart said he's he's good to go. He could have gone back in the game last week, but it's going to be nice to see this group at 100% health because I'm not sure we've seen it at any point this year. Another interesting side note in this one that I came across in preparing for the breakdown. Tennessee actually really struggles at home with penalties. I don't know why. They're 130th in penalties in home games this year. They average nine penalties per home game and about 80 yards. If they're playing behind the sticks at home against this Georgia defense, they can pin their ears back and come after the quarterback. Could be a long day for Joe Milton and company. And if you look at Joe Milton, it's been an okay season. Uh, there have been some good moments. There have been some bad moments. And there's been some better moments there in the middle part of the season before things kind of fell down, fell down last week. But he's not really in a great spot right now as far as uh, where he's at with his accuracy. Uh, the completion percentage is not where you want it to be. He's 12th out of 12 amongst qualifiers. Uh, he's only ahead of Auburn, Peyton Thorne, and Kentucky's Devin Leary on adjusted completion percentage, which is not what you want. He also has one of the lowest yards per attempt, too. So he hasn't done a great job stretching the field, but he has done a good job, I think, making timely decisions in the run game. So his legs, now that he's healthy again, have been, an, I think, an asset to the Tennessee offense as a whole because you can't get overly aggressive knowing that Joe Milton does possess the ability to take off if the opportunity presents itself. Another big one in this one, third downs. Georgia's first in third down conversion rate. They're unbelievable, all right? For 56% of the time on third down. Meanwhile, Tennessee, not quite as good, about 45%. So that's a pretty significant gap between where Georgia's at and where Tennessee's at. And if third downs are the ultimate differentiator, then Georgia will have a pretty significant advantage. A couple trends in this one. Georgia's 4-0 against the spread in the last four meetings against Tennessee. They're also 11-4 against the spread against ranked opponents since 2021. Tennessee, meanwhile, they're 4-11 against the spread as an underdog since 2020. So all the trends point to Georgia in this one. That's where I'd lean as well. I think Georgia handles their business. I think they're peaking at the right time and are getting better and should handle their business on the road against a Tennessee team that I think will hang in there for a while, but ultimately they'll get pulled away from in the second half of the football game.